Hey guys, what's up? This is Andrew for ChainSenses.com. So I'm here to make an update on AMC uh, today and I will do GameStop tomorrow. We had uh, quite a bloodbath, guys, uh, on those two as well as on other meme stocks. So let's go through the press action, through the news. Uh, let's try to understand what happened here, what are the dynamics of those uh, markets. And of course, let's try to see what might happen next. So let's get into it. And yes, so I'm gonna start with AMC. Um, all right, we can maybe first have a look at the technicals, then we're gonna very quickly check the option market, nothing very new there, but I have one thing that I wanna show you. And let's try to understand what is happening here. So first, in terms of TA, so as you can see, still the same situation. I mean, uh, one, two, three, we are in a fourth wave and this is what I'm actually struggling to, to do here. I don't know if this correction is still on or not. Okay, let's be honest. I mean, in my uh, last video, I was making here a WXY correction and here one, two, and then I was expecting three, four, five. So we should be in a third wave, all right? But in third waves, we don't have those gap downs, you know, that are showing that bears totally take control of the market, even if it's only a few days. So this is telling me that maybe this is uh, actually not what is happening. Maybe we are more in a corrective mode. So to answer this question, let's first check what are the reasons I think that we are in a move up. So what I can do here is to check uh, if the moves up are impulsive or corrective and here I mean, there is no other counting that I can do here than one, two, three, four, five, all right? Here I had my breakout that happened in August and one, two, three, four, five. I mean, you can't count three waves here. So this is impulsive and then here ABC, it looks very much corrective. So this, this counting is still on the table, but like I just said, this gap down is not looking good at all. So we're gonna try to analyze where it's coming from. First, what we can see is that the volume was weak on that day. 46 million shares uh, traded, which is not a lot for such a strong move, all right? Usually when you have those strong moves, if you have a lot of, I mean, when you go through a lot of price action, you should find a lot of traders in the way down or up, and it should create a strong volume that shows that everybody agrees upon this price, which is not the case here. Unfortunately, it doesn't mean that we can't go lower. When we, we check the move down here, you know, here the volume was weak and then we went brutally lower. So it's just one thing to check, but it's not a guarantee of rebound at all. Then what we can check is where are our support levels. So this is quite easy to do, which doesn't mean once again that those supports would hold, but you just check the recent low. So the recent, the most recent low is here at 35.5 roughly. So we have a support here. The next one is, okay, you can put one at 33.5, but I would rather put the one, this one at 32. It doesn't change much. We have some support here. So all this area, you have a lot of recent lows, which is good, which means that there are buyers that are probably waiting there that couldn't get in at these levels and that would be, would be very happy to get in if we go there. Maybe you are one of those buyers. So this is quite good that we have all these uh, recent lows quite close. Then we can make a trend line. So this trend line is new. I just added it today. Uh, so you, it, it's, it's like quite, you know, whenever you see a trend line that is having many reactions, you know, it's good to use. And here we have one, two, three, four. And yesterday we got almost a fixed reaction. So we have here a double support level, all right, at 35.5. So it would be very good if it holds and on the other way around, it would not look good at all if it breaks. So it's very important what is gonna happen here. It looks very much actually like GME. Uh, GME is, is a bit in the same situation with a massive triangle, like, you know, that really looks like a bull flag. So of course, uh, the ultimate breakout that we want to see is here, guys. Okay, bam. So this would be, to me, a very uh, good signal to use for the, this fixed wave to be really on. So let's try to analyze a bit what could have created this. So when you check a bit the news, there is nothing uh, much you find. 
except that there are earnings that are coming around the 1st of November and investors uh, seem to be afraid that the earnings doesn't, don't look good, you know? Uh, so they're anticipating it. And like I was saying in my Discord, we have a saying in trading that is buy the rumor and sell the news. Okay, so this is happening quite often whenever you have some major announcements that you know gonna happen. Investors like to anticipate and be like, oh, it's gonna be good news, so I'm gonna buy right now. And whenever the announcement comes, even if it meets expectations, they don't have any more reason to buy, you know, because it's past. So usually, just like we had on Bitcoin ETF, you know, Bitcoin went higher, made new all-time high, and just got uh, sold off uh, quite heavily yesterday because there was no more good news to cheer about. And I'm pretty sure that Bitcoin will go to 100,000 within a few months. Uh, but we're just pulling back after the news. So here, maybe we're gonna have the opposite reaction. So investors are selling before the news, but actually they are checked a bit and there are uh, good expectations about ticket sales in October because people started to go again in the cinema. So this might actually be a surprise uh, on the upside for the results to come. So let's see. What I'm saying is that we have a catalyzer coming and we are right now sending off uh, without volume on apparently no news. So I think that uh, better days are about to come. But once again, technically, it would be really, really good if we can hold above 35.5. Now, let's analyze the scenario because let's be honest, guys, this gap down is nasty, okay? When you, whenever you have this kind of gap down, I mean, you can check in the past, but it's usually not uh, good for <laughs> the coming days. So I'm a bit scared actually that here we break out on the downside. So let's analyze this case because we need to know what would be the situation if this happens. So like I said, <clears throat> we can have a fake out and quickly come back, okay? So this is possible, okay? This would be just a fake out, it happens. So it would be very important to check the volumes here. If the volume is weak on the breakout, it's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but it's okay. Uh, if the volume is strong, it's not good. So first thing, then this trend line would be broken. So what could be uh, the other situation? If we go below 33.5, this would make a new low. So this couldn't be a one, two anymore, okay? What we are trying to have here is one, two, three, four, five, right? Five waves inside uh, our third wave, typical development. But the second wave cannot go below the start of the first wave. It's technically not acceptable. So then it would mean that this is another correction and that we go lower. So if this counting is to be valid, we need to stay absolutely above 33.5. So this gives us another uh, level to watch in terms of a breakout below this trend line. Okay, if we come back quickly, like from here, and come back inside, it will be okay. Then if we stay here and we make new lows, then probably what's, what is happening is that this, of course, is not anymore a one-two, okay? This would be a massive corrective pattern that we would need to label. It would maybe be uh, a triangle, A, B, C, D, E, I don't know. Probably a triangle, by the way. And we need to find the new base. So maybe the base would be here, okay? Because we have a 28, 28. So if this breaks, try to follow, guys. I'm sorry, there is a lot of drawings here. I'm just showing you the alternative scenario so we can be prepared, okay? If this is, okay, this, this would be all wrong. Let's be very honest and it could be a different, so A, B, C, okay, Why? It's really not a perfect triangle, okay? I would prefer it holds, guys, to be honest. I, I struggle to find a good counting. I, I prefer something like this. This is a triangle too, and it makes more sense. But if it breaks, we can always have a triangle with a horizontal basis. That would still, you know, probably create a bullish reaction. Uh, so what I'm saying is that basically we have different countings. It's, of course, not clear here what is the right one right now. There's nothing else I can say. But what is clear is that we have support at 35.5.
we have support at 33.5, support at 32, support at 28, and uh, a catalyzer coming roughly in one week. So I think we would go lower here a little bit once again because of this gap down, but probably one of the scenarios would be good, and from there we can expect this once again uh, come back here and. I'm really waiting, you know, anyway, this is coming guys, this is coming because as you can see this triangle, even if I take the most bearish case, okay, I could go to 24 if I take the most bearish case, but even in this situation, guys, we converge, so sorry, up. okay, but depending when you put the basis, but roughly, you know, in Gen 22, we're going to need to choose a direction, okay? Uh, it can actually take more time if the basis is that low, but if we get back to the original basis, it would be November, and if I go like, I don't know, for example, if I take this one, I'm just trying to see when we're going to have a final answer, because this is what you guys want to know, this is what I want to know too, and, you know, Gen 22 here, I'm, I'm trying to see whenever we have no other choice than really making new lows or breaking this trend line. And as you can see, this trend line is going lower. So in Gen 22, it would be at 35. So sooner or later, guys, we're going to have the possibility here to make this major breakout. That would uh, for sure uh, drive many bulls uh, back in AMC. Another thing I wanted to show you quickly, guys, uh, you know the spreadsheet, I'm not going to explain again. Uh, just I uh, keep an eye on the 145 strike and where which maturity is coming from. So as you can see, we have right now, so the biggest amount of shares comes from here. Uh, the amount is above 17 million, so it's growing, guys, which is good, 17.3 million. So this just means that the move, the movement is not over at all and that people still, you know, put money into that strike because they believe in uh, the most. So this is good and uh, we can also see that the Gen 23 maturity is growing. We have almost 100,000 calls right now on it. Uh, okay, so we have 300,000 calls on Gen 22, but it's just something I keep an eye on because as long as this would be full, this would create troubles for all market players on AMC, like market makers, hedge funds, you know, this creates tr a lot of trouble. So as long as we have this, it means that uh, something is up. And this is what I check, for example, on the other stocks, on the, for example, the other memes like uh, Fissel or Prague. Uh, they don't have this, let me show you quickly, like Prague, for example, they don't have at all this kind of option distribution. So this is the difference to me between a long-term squeeze and a short-term squeeze. Okay, here I check Prague, so the short is bigger, 50%, but when you check where it's coming from, you can see that it's mostly coming uh, around the money. You don't have, okay, you can see here, so we have 5 million shares on the 2.5 strike. The 5 strike is growing a little bit, but it's only 100%. AMC is the 400% strike in terms of where we are right now. 145 is plus 300% compared to 36. So here it would be around 9, 10, you know, we don't have that. Even the 8 strike is available, there's 7.5, there's nobody on this one. So this is just showing you once again, this is the reason why I personally do believe in the squeeze, even if it takes sometimes, uh, you know, a different path from uh, what my TA is showing, I still believe in it. And it's not easy, let's be honest, uh, this, I mean, I was expecting a small pullback, but definitely not a strong bearish day like this. So I will keep guys updating you guys uh, on this, I hope this is helpful for you. I would anyway keep doing that because uh, I'm involved in this uh, trade and I do this to know myself what I should do with my position and of course there is no question about uh, getting out, uh, we're here for the squeeze. But it's interesting to know at what level uh, things are looking good or not and if we should reload, add more shares, options. So this is the reason why I will keep doing that. So uh, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to click on the sub, like and bell button so you're going to be the first to know when I upload anything new. And stay close to shore. I'll see you guys.